In periods of low pressure, dead baits really produce the business, and what better dead bait to catch a pike on than this? Just look at the sheen on that fish, it's beautiful. A nice fresh rud, it's just thawed out, it looks golden, it looks natural. That's the sort of bait a pike's going to eat, and you know, a lot of people when they go pike fishing on gravel pits like this one here, they use things like mackerel and herrings and smelts, and you do catch plenty of pike on sea dead baits, but sometimes a natural bait will outfish those sea baits, and I'm going to put that to the test today. I've got two sea baits out on my ledger rigs, but I'm going to float fish this rud in a bay where the pike are used to feeding on rud like this one. They've got the rud packed into this corner, and I reckon a natural dead bait like this one could do the business today. We're going to give it a go. Now this is a working pit, so that accounts for the bit of machinery noise we've probably got in the background. Normally this lake is absolutely packed with carp anglers, but we're in the autumn now, the carp anglers are starting to drift away and the pike anglers are starting to arrive. But I've got the fishing just the way I like it today, because I'm actually the only person on the lake. Me and all those big pike. I can't wait, and I don't think you can either. Let's get this rod out there. Well, I've hooked the rudder up. I'm going to actually drift this bait on the wind because we've got the wind behind us, which means we can give the bait a bit of movement. I've got it on a, a simple sliding float, actually, just running on the line. You've probably seen this sort of thing before. We've got a, a bead and above the float there, and there's a stop knot that controls the depth. So I can fish this from anywhere from sort of two foot under the surface right down to near the bottom at 10 feet. And if drifting the bait around doesn't work, suspended off the bottom, then I'll probably try fishing it on the bottom a little bit later on. But let's try drifting it first, because the pike may well be feeding up on the water on the rud at this early time of the day. Let's get it out in the bay and see what happens. This is a nice corner of the lake, actually. With the wind behind me, it's easy to just lob the bait out, you don't need a big cast. Quite often people get obsessed with fishing at distance, not only for carp but also for pike. And yet, you know, the predators sometimes patrol right on the marginal shelf here in the gravel pit. They tend to herd the rud in this bay right up against the marginal shelf. They use it almost like a pen. If you watch a, a sheepdog herding sheep up, he pushes them, funnels them into the trap. And that's what the pike do here, they use this corner and the sides of the gravel pit to pen the rud in. And there could be quite a few fish actually out there working the shoal together, making repeated forays and raids into the shoal of rud, bashing the hell out of them actually. And that happens a lot in the winter, um, early winter, uh, but particularly of course in the autumn, which is the time we're in right now. So that's the theory. I suppose we better see how the practice works out, huh? Something's picked that up, unless that rud's mysteriously come to life, there's a fish there. I'm just going to give it a couple of seconds, play a little bit of line out. Yep, the line's actually tightening up and zipping away now. There's a pike taking line. Yep, I'm in. That little rud just drifting around the bay has done the business. There's been rud dimpling on the surface in front of me all over the place. And the obvious bait to give them was a little rud, and that's quite a nice pike. That's a good start to the day. <laughs> Total fishing. There's the bait now on the surface. I don't know whether you can see it just behind the pike, just sinking out of sight there. Gonna take a look at this fish, see where it's where it's hooked. Might need the net for this one. Oh awesome. I think this one could be a net job, folks. What a start to the day. Clonking great pike. A beauty. Oh, look at that. Unbelievable fish. I'm playing this fish here on braid, so you can feel every shake of the head. There's absolutely no stretch in it. And what a great fight. Come on, baby. Still doesn't want to come. Look at that fish go. Come on. Oh. 
<laughs> you got a head like a wolf. Look at that. Not happy. Magnificent. Oh, look at this fish go! There we go. Yes. That's a very, very nice pike. Look at that. Unbelievable fish. Superb fish. Whew. Right, beats staying at home doing the knitting, I suppose, isn't it? <laughs> Fantastic. Total fishing. Oh, that is a magnificent pike. It's a huge fish. Absolute clonker. Now, there's an old phrase in trout fishing about matching the hatch, and when they talk about that, what they're referring to is using something which the trout are feeding on. And that's what I did this time with pike by using a, a rud when it was quite obvious that the pike were fry feeding on rud. If you use semi barbless trebles, then it's much easier to unhook fish. And a lot of people are nervous of pike, but if you know the right way to do it, you can't come to any harm. I've got my hand in behind the gill cover here, not touching the gill rakers of the fish. To stop it thrashing around, I've got it lightly clamped between my legs. I can open his jaws and work inside the mouth without getting bitten by these quite incredible teeth. And I don't know whether you've seen this before on a pike, but I mentioned it's got a head like a wolf. It's got teeth to match. You've got these gripping teeth here in three distinct bands which run from the front of the jaw in almost vertical lines and then these sharper teeth here which cut into the prey obviously disabling it but they're very delicate those teeth so you must be careful when you're unhooking pike not to damage them because that's how this fish feeds it, it bites other fish so if its teeth are damaged then obviously you're inhibiting it but what a magnificent superb fish and I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at that before weighing it because that is an absolute beauty. Big fish. Well, there you go. I make that 23 pounds and eight ounces. Absolutely corking pike, what a fish. This is a day ticket water actually, St. John's Lake, so anybody can come here and fish for these pike. 